uh, that last topic is on the agenda of the informal ECOFIN, but uh, we'll... Whoops. Thanks. Right. No, no, that's You've fine. Heard nothing. We're very transparent. Everyone knows it's on the agenda, uh, but we have yet to discuss it. So let's take some questions. Let's go to the first row first. And we'll gradually work our way back. Hi. Hi. Athanasius with the Real News Star Channel Greece. Uh, I got two questions. First of all, given the fact that all the measures discussed in Athens may be from the revenue side, should we presume that the, the contingency measures should be from the expenditure side in order to be credible? That's the first one. And the second uh, has to do with the debt uh, sustainability. Do you actually consider doing something also for the ECB bonds? Are they on the table? Because they are, uh, let's say, pertinent issue for the next couple of years as uh, payments. Are they? part of the, or could they be part of the uh, uh, debt sustainability exercise that we'll have in the future? Thanks. Um, you're asking too much details, which I can't provide at the moment. Um, on the substance of the contingency package, work will uh, continue in the coming days between the institutions and the Greek uh, government. There are different uh, possibilities, but as we've said, the criteria are credibility, um, automaticity uh, and an objective way to have them triggered if necessary uh, and whether uh, the, the content of the different measures I won't go into uh, now. Uh, your second question was much about the uh, the profile, the reprofiling of the debt. Uh, we've yet to go into that so we got a mandate and we'll start work with the experts also uh, obviously involving uh, the ESM uh, being the uh, biggest accreditor uh, or doing the uh, lending for us. So we'll bring those uh, experts together and start doing some work on uh, possibilities of reprofiling. Yes, please. Hey, Miguel Sanchez for Cadena Copa Spain. Actually, it's uh, a question about Spain, about the figure, the deficit figure that was to which published yesterday. I want to know whether you think about the figure, if you think that this is the moment to, uh, to strengthen the position with Spain, to impose sanctions, or you think that due to the current situation that the recovery is still fragile, uh, it would be better to give more time to Spain. And also I want to know what is the influence, what is the problem of not having government in Spain for all, all this procedure? Right. Let me ask the Commissioner to respond to that. Uh, today, I merely gave a quick presentation of uh, the results provided yesterday by Eurostat. I commented country by country on them. The objectives pursued have not been met. Uh, as for the rest, we will take our decisions in due course. Let me remind you that on the 3rd of May, we will be presenting our spring forecasts. Uh, and therefore, mid-May, we will propose an overall package, and it will be in that context that decisions will be taken. At this stage, there is uh, nothing in procedural terms uh, to be done, and nothing indeed was discussed in those terms. We'll come back to fiscal uh, issues when we discuss the semester uh, in a much broader way in our June meeting. So let's go to the left. Yes, the lady in the red jacket. Yes, hello, Maria Maggiore from Radio Popolare. I have a question for Mrs. Lagarde, um, in français, si je peux. Um, quel serait le niveau, uh, what will be an acceptable level to the IMF to ask your board to start to participate in the program? Can you give us some figures on that? Uh, we have uh, heard today uh, about number of things being excluded. So what kind of figures, what kind of title, will you wait till the whole debate is concluded? But uh, uh, now the debate's been officially launched. Uh, will you start the procedure? Thank you. Well, I'll reply in French then. Around the table today, we heard uh, a broad meeting of minds whereby reprofiling uh, a debt operation uh, was something that could be considered subject to certain conditions, but without reducing the nominal value of a debt, that is, without a haircut. As our calculations stand, as the debt sustainability analysis stands, 
as we've carried it out, we see that it is possible to carry out a reprofiling using all the available provisions, but without a haircut. So that is a possible way forward. In terms of a timetable, you heard the president of Eurogroup indicating that he has received mandate from his colleagues to start the work. I think his principle whereby nothing is agreed until everything has been agreed also applies to that part of a package. Afterwards, the implementing provisions uh, is something else. But uh, the discussion has now started. Yes, the gentleman in the white shirt, but there are many gentlemen in white shirts. Hello, uh, you Johannes Antipas. Gentlemen really wear colored jackets. That makes it so much easier for me. Well, that's true. Um, Yanis Antipas from Protothema and New Money in Athens, Greece. Uh, speaking monetary terms, can you estimate the size of the contingency plans at the moment? Thank you. The figures we're looking at is uh, to get 3% in the upfront package, which is almost completed. And the contingency package would have to be two percentage points GDP to uh, supplement that. Of course, only if necessary. Uh, the latest figures from Greece have been quite good. So there is reason for some optimism, but uh, to give that extra assurance and confidence both in the Eurogroup, but also to outside investors and markets, uh, we're looking for that additional two percentage points. One follow-up question, sir. Just one follow-up question. Uh, do we need to also have an agreement on the format of the debt question in Greece to have uh, an agreement on the first uh, assessment? And do you think there's enough time to do this by the end of next week? Thank you. Well, you know, some t sometimes negotiations get stuck because you can talk endlessly what has to happen first. So, uh, and then in the end you come to the conclusion, let's, let's make it into one package. There is no deal until, until there is a deal on everything. Um, uh, but uh, we are very close on the 3% upfront package. We need to design uh, the mechanism for the contingency package and the content of the contingency package. We will in parallel start work on the analysis and the design of debt measures and bring all of that together in a, a Eurogroup meeting. Uh, and uh, we will all have to bridge uh, our differences. Uh, for some, of course, uh, obviously who uh, the contingency measures are difficult, and for some, debt is, uh, is a big uh, issue, uh, politically difficult. Uh, but uh, on all sides, it was very constructive today, and there was an open attitude to uh, cross that bridge. Yes, madam. Christina Vasilaki, Athens News Agency. Two questions, if I may, just to clarify your replies to the previous uh, people. Uh, first one is, are the contingency measures uh, should be legislated up front one by one or as a commitment uh, from the part of the Greek government? And second of all, um, you said that the Eurogroup stands ready to begin the um, discussion on the debt, but is an agreement on the debt relief measures a uh, precondition for the next uh, disbursement? Thank you very much. Um, as I was writing down the first one, I missed the second one, but hopefully someone else has heard it. So the first question is about credibility. In order for the contingency measure to be uh, credible, they need to be legislated. Now, how that is designed, whether you just legislate a mechanism or individual measures is yet to be discussed. I think we need to find ways that also are feasible and possible in the legal system that uh, the Greek uh, the Greeks have but it needs to be credible um, and that will be uh, judged uh, in the next Eurogroup um, the second question about debt. about debt is it a precondition is it a precondition for for the disbursement, for the disbursement. Um, the disbursement hinges on the completion of the uh, first review so that requires the upfront package and a contingency package that would could lead to a positive first review uh, and that could trigger the next disbursement uh, but I think to get a deal also on contingency measures uh, there would also have to be clarity on debt and there is another very strong reason to have clarity on debt is that we want the full commitment of the IMF and you know their position on this yes sir 
Hi, Simon Marks from Market News International. A uh, question for uh, Madame Lagarde. Um, with regards to the figures that came out yesterday from Eurostat on Greece, do you think that those figures could result in the IMF revising its own fiscal baseline on Greece um, in, in line with those of the Europeans? And, and just quickly for uh, Mr. Corre, um, there's been a lot of debate, obviously, recently around um, <coughs> political debate around the ECB's monetary policy stance from, from various politicians. And I just wanted to ask you what you thought about that debate uh, now that it's in the political domain and whether you thought it could perhaps um, have an impact on uh, the ECB's in, in independence. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, clearly, uh, the numbers that have been published by Eurostat are more positive than what we had thought, what all institutions had thought, and even the authorities in Greece had figured. So we welcome those numbers. And if they are accurate, it will have an impact on all our framework calculations and what have you. I say if they are accurate, because we have been there, and Eurostat itself has often revisited numbers. I think 2013 was a case in point where it was announced at 1.5% in April and then revised down twice to arrive at 0.5%. So we will we welcome them. We will scrutinize them carefully to make sure that, you know, it's unlikely that there will be revisions going forward because it would be unrealistic to reassess all our numbers on the basis that uh, numbers that might very well be revised. Let me just point out that this discussion doesn't affect our wish to have contingency measures. Correct. It only affects the question, will we need the contingency measures? So if the figures uh, are indeed more positive than uh, e even the most positive of us had expected, then we will, the chance of having to use the contingency package becomes a lot uh, smaller. So, Benoit? Yeah, on the, on the ECB and, and politics, I mean, you might as well ask the, the Yorgo president, he's a probably better play than me to, to comment. What I would say that uh, any, uh, any debate is good uh, as long as it's uh, constructive, as long as it's uh, educated by facts, analysis. Uh, so we're always open, available to discussion. That's, uh, that's okay, that's useful. Now, we all, we all have uh, hard work to do. Ministers have hard work to do. We have hard work to do. We have different responsibilities under the treaty. So the uh, best uh, contribution we can have to the Eurozone is just to deliver on what we have to do under the treaty. Let me just stay, uh, say, and I've said this uh, in the press conference quite often, the ECB really needs to be able to do its work in independence. That's not just a formal statement. It's in our treaties. Uh, but it's also materially very important for the credibility and the effectiveness of the ECB measures they need to come to their decisions in full independence. So to all politicians, uh, I have no problem with the debate and I understand criticism. There are always effects and people can discuss it. Politicians really need to refrain because anything they say, even if the ECB, and I know they will, even if the ECB ignores all these political comments, there might, some people might think that the ECB is being guided by political criticism. And that's the last thing we want. So I fully uh, endorse what Benoit has said. Yes, let's go there and then we'll move back. I've seen a German public radio. I have a question for Madame Lagarde. The German finance minister, Mr. Schäuble, always repeats there's no problem at all with debt sustainability in Greece. If and when Athens realizes what it promised last year, all the reforms on the tax systems and so on and so on and so on, there's no problem with that. You see it in a different perspective, is my impression. You mentioned that in the next month something has to be done also on the debt sustainability. So how do you come close? Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, I believe that no haircut is needed. So the nominal value of the debt does not have to be changed. Second, the July 2015 agreement remains the main guide for the work that is being done. Third, I think we all agree that the debt sustainability analysis 
when designed and determined on the basis of the conclusion of the review will guide us towards a mechanism that, as I said, will not, we think so at least today, require any haircut, but will probably require a reprofiling of the debt using multiple mechanisms, but that this would be triggered when needed, that is, upon completion of all the measures that are being discussed at the moment and based on realistic forecasts going forward. Thank you. Yes, please. Uh, Ruth Berschens, Handelsblatt Germany. Um, does that mean, uh, Mrs. Lagarde and also Mr. Deiselblum, that this debt relief will also be a contingency measure f following the example of the other contingency measure um, means that uh, debt relief becomes effective only when needed? Um, that, that's, how, that's how it was stipulated in the agreement, uh, if uh, necessary. Uh, and there are two ways to look at that. Well, there are three ways to look at it. First of all, it might be necessary because we want the involvement of the IMF. That's a very practical approach. Another way to look at it is to say uh, it's necessary, but not up front. It's necessary in maybe eight years' time or 15 years' time. We will actually see that on the basis of the DSA. And then you can discuss, do we need to solve those problems, even if they are in the future now? We can, we can do that. Or do we a promise, a mechanism, or a deliver a promise on that we will deal with it such and such way later on. All of this is yet to be discussed. Uh, what is um, uh, certainly possible, and has to happen anyway, is to look at how the, the debt and the different loans are structured and financed and refinanced. Some loans come to an end and they need to be refinanced, etc. So that aspect of reprofiling will happen anyway. We need to do it in a clever way, see what options we have there. And we need to look at what additional measures, as mentioned in the July agreement, what additional measures are necessary. And they may, may regard the problems that we see ahead of us. All of this we will work on in the coming days. Yes, please, sir. I'm, I'm just going to follow up, if I may, quickly uh, in response to your point. Um, you know, the objective of a program by our institutional framework at the IMF is that the country can return to markets. That's trigger number one. Trigger number two, the program has to be financed. Number three, it has to be financed by measures that are credible. And I've said, I think, in response to a question preliminary, that we believe at this point in time that it requires the strong, solid, credible measures on the one hand, a debt operation on the other hand. But I think we'll come to that point when we calculate the debt sustainability analysis. And that is, for the moment, you know, premature. Our assessment today is that both are needed. Let's calculate the DSA, and then we'll see what is needed and what triggers what. Yes, sir. Uh, il y a trois discussions if I understand correctly, there are three discussions in parallel. One on the uh, three percent, secondly on the two percent contingency measures, and thirdly on debt. The question is this. Do you need all the replies before you conclude your review and before funds are dispersed? No, any question in France, in, in French, must be to the Commissioner or Lagarde. Am I right to presume that? Commissioner. <laughs> the Commissioner. Yeah. Right. Well, the reply has already been given in English by the President. There were these uh, three packages. Uh, the first two are necessary for disbursement, but of course, uh, for reasons we've heard, uh, because of uh, the need for consistency and so that everyone is on board, uh, because for that, uh, all three have to be. Uh, considered uh, together. And it's been said equally clearly that progress in these three areas uh, is not different in nature, or is rather different in nature. We're close to agreement on the first, and we're going to start work on the second and third, and we'll finalize it in the Eurogroup. Yes, the question, what about next week's Eurogroup? 
I'll take one final question, which I have reserved for someone. Hi, thank you. Uh, Victoria Dendrina from the Wall Street Journal. Perhaps the first two questions. The first one might be a follow-up. Just to clarify, so you're waiting to have the, the package of measures finalized and then the contingency measures, and then you can have a Eurogroup, and you're expecting the debt relief discussion to be done and concluded at that Eurogroup as well, so in theory maybe next Thursday. And just one for Madame Lagarde, just because I'm not completely clear on where the IMF stands on the upfront versus no upfront debt relief measures. I would would you be okay with measures that like debt relief measures that extend beyond the timeline of the program, or would you want all the debt relief measures to be tied to program implementation and be done by 2018? Thank you. Uh, on the first question, uh, in the best scenario, uh, we'd have it done tomorrow. Uh, that's not very re realistic. If there is enough progress in the coming days, we will have that extra euro group on Thursday. Uh, we'll see how far we can get. So I don't, I don't want to, you to write tomorrow that there will, there will be a deal on Thursday. Uh, that is not a given fact. Work needs to be done. If we can do it next week, we will. I mean, there was, uh, let me be quite clear, there was a lot of support from all sides in the Eurogroup. Uh, let's do it as fast as we can. So that sense of urgency was very broad. No, sir, I'm sorry. No, sir, I'm sorry. I'm going to the lady over there. Sorry, your second one was uh, okay. Madame Lagarde. So to clarify the point, uh, we need completion of the debt terms and conditions in the next few days, weeks, whatever, short term, which does not mean that the implementation of the measures have to take place up front, because there is clearly, clearly an element of contingency that is linked to delivery by the Greek uh, authorities on the various commitments. And I think, you know, there is a difference between implementation and the length of time that we use to measure the sustainability of the debt by Greece. And that length of time is indeed way beyond the completion of the program, which is 2018. So that's, I think, a response to your question. The lady at the back. Oui, merci. Florence Autre pour la tribu. Thank you. Uh, for Mrs. Lagarde, last week you said, last week in Washington, you said that you thought that Greece uh, could heroically uh, free up 3.5% uh, in the long term, but you didn't think in the midterm, which is what is necessary right now for it to meet its objectives. So, in the long term, I meant. What did you mean by long term? And is it right to say that the reprofiling of debt is uh, destined to uh, provide some relief uh, to this fiscal pressure? And again, against what time horizon? And last thing, what uh, do you mean by a return of a IMF to a full commitment of a program? Specifically, once there's a deal on debt, what does it change regards IMF's participation in the program? Our analysis uh, of the primary surplus is pretty simple, is what I said in Washington last week. So that the country can achieve a 3.5 percent primary surplus by 2018, it will require major measures, which uh, we are now finalizing regards the first part of the measures. And we still have to have further discussions, the institutions together and the Greek authorities on the so-called contingent measures. However, the primary surplus at 3.5 percent for years and years to come, as is currently planned under forecasts, strikes us as unsustainable economically. It has been achieved in the past. Uh, during a period of over about 10 years by Belgium, a uh, very high level of uh, primary surplus. But that doesn't strike us uh, as uh, uh, something you can use as uh, a parameter in forecasting debt sustainability for Greece. But we'll discuss that in due course. To the last question, we have some very junior journalists here today. And the last question goes to Alia. Thank you. What will you all do when there is a next crisis? <laughs> wow. That's, 
Uh, thank you very much for your question. Um, how much time do you have for the answer? I think the best thing to do for the next crisis is to prepare and try to avert it, to stop it from happening, uh, and to make our economy stronger, to make our banks stronger, because they were part of the last crisis, if you remember. So that's what we're doing. We're making the bank stronger, making the economy stronger, and making the budgets, the begroting, uh, of governments uh, healthy again. So if a next crisis comes, the banks can uh, work uh, as a buffer and can take that uh, hit. Government budgets can work as a buffer and take that hit. Uh, but the most important thing is to make our economy strong, uh, to have healthy companies, investments, get more jobs, and people to spend more money. That's the best way to avert it. Thanks for your question, and thank you for joining us.